Hello, good morning and welcome to a lovely hill just outside of Edinburgh where it is cold, it is rather blustery with wind and we have been met with a fairly disappointing sunrise. But today I'm going to break down exactly why this workout could change your life. I firmly believe that in just four hours you can completely change your perspective and I'm saying this for anyone and everyone of all athletic abilities. In this video today I'm going to break down the six reasons why I believe that is the case against my background and experience in ultra endurance events, most recently a double Ironman distance extreme triathlon which you can find just here. As I got a lot of time to reflect on how valuable the time spent alone in my own head processing my thoughts was in the modern world. So we're going to discuss that today. As always, I've said a hundred times before, prep your stuff the night before, plan your route safely and effectively. But other than that, let's get into today's video. As I said in the intro, we are just outside of Edinburgh. I am just below the summit of Alan Muir, as it is so windy up there. This is the only way you're going to hear me. And I'm about to head off for four hours of movement, running slash walking a lap of the Pentlands today. But before I do that, let me share one quick point as to why I think this is going to be so valuable. So for the YouTube intellectuals amongst you, yes, I do currently have a man behind the camera, but I am about to head off for four hours of uninterrupted, undistracted, stomping around the Pentlands because amidst the busyness of day-to-day -day life, the chaos of the Western world, it's very difficult to find time to spend alone with our thoughts, embracing a little bit of discomfort and leaning into it to learn some lessons about ourselves. And that's exactly what I'm going to do today. It's something I've practiced for years now. I've gained an enormous amount of value from it and you can too. Spending some time on your own, whether that's a walk, whether it's one mile, 20 miles, whether it's a run, whether it's a swim, whether it's a bike, whatever it is, committing that time to be alone in your own thoughts, embracing discomfort is a very valuable thing that might just change your life. found a dip in the terrain that's allowing for a small gap in the wind so I'm going to stand right here for point number two which is that if you're the sort of person that does most of your training indoors whether that's over the winter or otherwise then taking it outdoors can be a very rewarding challenge. You're exposed to the elements, you're exposed to new movement patterns, you're exposed to new environments like this one and in doing so that's very rewarding psychologically as well as physically because trail running is different to road running, walking up hills different to walking on the roads for example and as we enter the winter, we can often go into a period of a bit more randomized training, a base phase, as you say. The Russians were famous for periods of GPP where their Olympic athletes were just playing lots of basketball and wrestling and things. So the winter is a fantastic opportunity to take your training outdoors, experience a new challenge, reap the rewards and build your resilience. Back to work. I was hoping that I could deliver these points quite dynamically, but I have come to terms with the fact that I'm going to have to find little pockets like this one where it's just out of the wind enough for me to be able to make my point, which is number three in that it's very difficult to find opportunities to be completely uninterrupted in the modern world, whether that's around family, work, training, hobbies, other commitments, etc, etc. It's very difficult to block out the time to just be alone with your own thoughts and be present. Very podcasty term, I know, but I think it's very valuable because it allows you the opportunity to reflect on the week, reflect on the month, reflect on the direction you're going, think about what's important to you, be appreciative of the surroundings around you, be thankful for the family, the work, the things that I mentioned before, etc, etc. So finding that opportunity is something that I think is very valuable. It's done me a world of good. And in settings like this one, it's a great way of doubling up some reflective time with some exercise and some fantastic scenery. It's 
important to highlight that for the vast majority of us, the most effective way of achieving the outcome that we're looking for is a walk. There might be some triathletes, cyclists, ultra endurance athletes watching that could do it with a bike in the pool or in the open water, etc, etc. But I think for the vast majority of you watching, a walk is going to be the most relevant movement pattern. So with that in mind, I want to make it crystal clear that whether you go one mile, sit on a park bench for three hours and then walk a mile home, or whether you walk non-stop for the four hours, the outcome we're looking for is four hours of uninterrupted time in a new setting without headphones in, without access to the devices, it gives you that uninterrupted opportunity to reflect on the direction you're going, the week, the month, as I've said, it gives you that moment where moving meditation can occur and you can reflect on things and provide yourself with an opportunity that you don't often get. So point number four is all about the general benefits of endurance training, is if you come from an environment like this one, you'll likely be very refined at hard efforts, big sends, hard pushes, but maybe lacking some of the patience, deliberation, and strategy that comes with endurance training. And I'm not saying that you should treat this four hour effort as a endurance challenge, because we're principally looking for psychological benefits. But what I am saying is opening yourself up to the total other end of the spectrum in terms of demands might give you a taste of what endurance training entails. So is it something you wanna explore? Is it something you wanna to look towards in the future? Are there benefits that can carry over to you as a gym athlete? Are there benefits, are you resilience that can carry into your day-to-day -day life? In simple terms, you're just taking yourself a little bit into the unknown, a little bit into the uncomfortable, a little bit into the irregular, and I don't need to tell you how beneficial those things can be. They could even change your life. Excuse me, what is point number five? So point number five is to spend more time with Highland cows. It could be, but it isn't. Point number five is actually the physiological benefits of aerobic work. So endurance training will build your aerobic base and that is ultimately the foundation of all fitness. So if you can commit to four hours moving at whatever pace is aerobically demanding for you, then that is going to be a great way to introduce yourself to the feeling of aerobic work. Whether you're in the gym, whether you're an athlete at any sort of level, aerobic training is only beneficial. So working in a four hour experiment to see how it feels and what pace feels right for you is a great place to start. So that is that. Anything else to say? Keep your secrets. And we are back at the car as it has got a little bit windier and a little bit rainier. The wind at the top was an absolute joke. So for pretty much that whole loop, couldn't really film anything at the summits and didn't want to film too much on the GoPro other than when I was delivering points as I didn't want to be a massive hypocrite. But we're now back at the car having almost been mauled by a cow. But in this context, Jesus Christ. <laughs> but live to fight another day. So it's probably worth covering point number six, which is that you get an opportunity to do away with these things. My hands are very cold, that wasn't all that well delivered, but laptops, phones, iPads, it's difficult to get away from them. So having four hours uninterrupted with your own thoughts without access to your phone is a great opportunity. And that's something that's really hard to come by these days. And you're probably thinking, oh, well, yeah, I need to practicality or this or that. I, I agree. But if you can block out four hours where you just give yourself the opportunity to be without that sort of dependency that you might feel that, oh, I need to get back to that email. Oh, what if my mum's trying to call me? Oh, no, I need to check Instagram, see how my post is doing. Doing away with all those things will be good for you in my personal opinion. So that is point number six, and that is in fact the video. So if you've made it this far, thank you very much for watching. Don't forget to like the video, comment down below with your thoughts, feelings, and telling me when you are time blocking four hours to give this a bash yourself. If you follow me on Instagram, just here, then please tag me in your endeavors. Once you get home, as you won't have your device, will you? No, no you won't. So that is that, four hours to potentially reflect on and even change your life. I think that is a fantastic opportunity and I look forward to hearing how you get on. And I also look forward to seeing you next time.